Welcome back, singers. This is the weekly warm up, and my name is Laura. I love to share clear, fun voice education to help you enjoy your singing more. Now, you've heard me say before, and I know I'm not the only one who says this bring the tone forward. And this is wonderful advice, except it is possible for the tone to come too far forward, and that is nasal singing. So nobody likes a nasal sound, and today I'm gonna show you a great way to kind of figure out if it's going on for you and how to correct it. My first voice teacher used to often say, make sure there's always nose in the tone, but never put the tone in the nose. And this was very confusing to me, but now I think I know what she means because when we actually try to place the sound so far forward, when we're actually resonating in the nose itself, it gives us that sort of foghorn nasal sound and nobody likes that. Now, I wanna clarify here, I'm not talking about a kind of witchy sound, which if you'll notice is not actually in the nose itself, but up high behind the nose. That sound actually can be very useful for finding a really great, lively resonance in your singing, but you do have to balance it with them some space. And that is not what we're targeting today. What we're targeting today is that kind of that foghorn kind of sound. So here's a very easy way to diagnose it, to find it, and then to correct it. All you're gonna do is go up and down a five note scale, kind of like I just did, on each of the five vowels. And for each one, what I want you to do is go up and then at the top note, just start holding the nose so that the sound cannot resonate in the nose and come back down the scale. If you feel a difference, that probably means that your sound was in fact resonating in the nose. Let me demonstrate. If I was singing in a really nasal way on maybe Ooh, ooh is a very common vowel to make a little nasal. I might hear Can you hear how immediately when I closed my nose or blocked my nose, the sound clarified? Well, now I can do the reverse. I can sing with my nose closed first and then release on the top and try to maintain the sound in the same spot. If I let the sound then fall into the nose, I will actually feel and hear a change. And so I can catch myself and not let the sound fall that way. Now I would recommend that you do this on all five vowels. Maybe start with oo and o, oh, since those are the most frequently nasalized vowels. Then you can move to a, ah, e, eh, and e. And on each one, just do that same process. Not all on one breath, not all strung together, just do them each individually. Because then you'll figure out what your vowel is that you tend to nasalize the most often. And you can focus on adjusting that one the most when you're in your repertoire. So as an example, I might do Great, I didn't hear anything there, felt no change, so I know that that vowel is okay. What if I, what if I next went to O and I heard There I heard a huge change and I really felt uh, something kind of blocking as soon as I pinched my nose. So that tells me I might have some work to do there. I'm gonna flip the exercise around. And now I can feel where that vowel will resonate. Very forward, but not so forward, it's in the nose. I could then repeat. and so forth. So this is a very quick and easy trick. You can see you can use it either way, either to catch yourself or to correct nasality. And I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. 
If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and come back next Thursday. I'll look forward to seeing you then. And in the meanwhile, thank you for practicing.